কপি জন পল্লব গিরি ভদ ধারি কপি জন পল্লব গিরি ভদ ধারি যশোদনন্দন প্রযোজন রঞ্জন যশোদনন্দন প্রযোজন রঞ্জন যমুনা ছিরাপন সারি যমুনা ছিরাপন সারি জয় রাধ মাধব কুঞ্জ বিহারে জয় রাধ মাধব কুঞ্জ বিহারে জয় গোপি জন পল্লব গিরি ভদ ধারি গোপি জন পল্লব গিরি ভদ ধারি যশোদনন্দন প্রযোজন রঞ্জন যশোদনন্দন প্রযোজন রঞ্জন যমুনা ছিরাপন সারি যমুনা ছিরাপন সারি রায় রাধ মাধব কুঞ্জ বিহারি রায় রাধ মাধব কুঞ্জ বিহারি সিদ্ধান্ত সরস্বতী ঠাকুর প্রভুপাদ কি অনন্তি কোটি বৈষ্ণব বৃন্দ কি নামাচার্য হরিদাস ঠাকুর কি প্রেম শিক হো শ্রীকৃষ্ণ চৈতন্য প্রভু নিত্যানন্দ শ্রী অদ্বৈত কীটাধার শ্রীবাসী গৌরভক্তবৃন্দ কি শ্রী শ্রী রাধা কৃষ্ণ গোপ গোপীনাথ শ্যাম খুন্দ রাধা খুন্দ কীটি গোপ ধন কি শ্রী বৃন্দাবন ধাম কি শ্রী নবদ্বীপ মায়াপুর ধাম কি শ্রী জগন্নাথপুরি ধাম কি গঙ্গময়ী কি যমুনময়ী কি 
भक्ति देवी की जाए तुलसी देवी की जाए समबेर भक्त वृंद की जाए गौर प्रेमानंदी ओ ग्लोरी स्तुदीय संबल दिवोती ओ ग्लोरी स्तुदीय संबल दिवोती ओ ग्लोरी स्तुदीय संबल दिवोती ओ ग्लोरी स्तु श्री गुरु एन श्री गोरांग भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय धारमा प्रवर्थाय मु नामा संकीर्तन चारी भाव भक्ति दिया नाचामु भुवन युग धारमा प्रवर्थाय मु नामा संकीर्तन चारी भाव भक्ति दिया नाचा मुभुवान युगधारमा प्रवर्थाय मु नामसान कीर्तन शोरी भाव भक्ति दिया नाचा मुभुवान युगधारमा प्रवर्थाय मु नामसान कीर्तन शोरी भाव भक्ति दिया नाचा मु भुवान युगधारमा प्रवर्थाय मु नामसान कीर्तन चारी भाव भक्ति दिया नाचा मुभुवान
Yuga Dharma, the religion of the age, Pravartaimu, I shall inaugurate Nam Sankirtan, chanting of the holy names, Chari, for Bhava of moods. Bhakti, Bhakti. Devotion. devotion, Dia, Dia. Giving. giving, Nachamu, Nachamu. I, shall cause to dance. I shall cause to dance, Bhuvana, Bhuvana. The, world. the world. I shall personally inaugurate the religion of the age, Nam Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy name. I shall make the world dance in ecstasy, realizing the four mellows of loving devotional service. Apani karimu bhakti bhava angikare, apani achari bhakti sikaim sapare. I shall accept the role of a devotee and I shall teach devotional service by practicing it myself. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. When one associates with a pure devotee, he becomes so elevated that he does not aspire even for sharsti, Sarupya, Samipya, or Salokya, because he feels that such liberation is a kind of sense gratification. Pure devotees do not ask anything from the Lord for their personal benefit. Even if offered personal benefits, pure devotees do not accept them because their only desire is to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by transcendental loving service. No one but the Lord himself can teach this highest form of devotional service. Therefore, when the Lord took the place of the incarnation of Kali Yuga to spread the glories of the chanting of Hare Krishna, the system of worship recommended in this age. He also distributed the processes of devotional service performed on the platform of transcendental spontaneous love. To teach the highest principles of spiritual life, the Lord himself appeared as a devotee in the form of Lord Chaitanya. Om Akyan Timidandasya Kyananjana Chalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Bakadamayam Tatati Sva Patantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Jutha Patakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajataham Sahakana Raghunatham Bitham Tham Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahakana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu 
दीना बंधु जगत पथे गोपेश गोपिका खंड राधा खंड नमोस्त थे थप्त कंसना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुथे देवी रणमा हरि प्रिय वंश कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पथिता भावनेभ्य वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैताधा श्रीवासती गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम I shall accept the role of a devotee and I shall teach devotional service by practicing it myself. We are reading today from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila chapter 3 entitled the external reason for lord chaitanya's appearance text 19 and 20 shri prabhupada explained how in bhagavad gita Krishna instructs us the highest science of transcendence his beloved devotee dear friend and relative arjun instructed krishna bring my chariot between the two armies who are assembled in kurukshetra and krishna who is jagat guru the supreme spiritual master of all living beings the source of all material and spiritual worlds janmadya shayataha from whom everything emanates he was taking orders from his devotee as parata sarathi the chariot driver of arjuna there by krishna's own will arjuna was put into a state of perplexity such a condition of perplexity that it was impossible for him to resolve the crisis that was taking place in his life either by his physical strength or by his influence as a panda pandava or even by his incredible intellect or even by his relationship with krishna as a best friend the situation was simply beyond him and this is the way material nature has been created that there will be situations that are beyond the scope of anyone it doesn't matter how much we have how much we know who we know 
Daivi he shugunamai mama maya duratyaya. These threefold, these three gunas are all powerful. And we see through the power of time, through unpredictable changes that take place, anyone can be put in grave danger at any moment. Padam padam yad vi padam natesha. Adiyatma kadi daiva kadi bhotika. It may come upon us in the form of disease, mental anguish, it may come upon us by miseries caused by other people, by other living entities, snakes or mosquitoes, or by nature's laws, tsunamis, cyclones, droughts, earthquakes. The jivatma is eternal, indestructible, beyond suffering and beyond death. But when that same immortal part of Krishna, the jivatma, identifies with this material nature and this mind constructed of subtle elements of material nature and the body composed of the gross elements, then we are vulnerable, whoever we are. Whatever position we may attain, it doesn't change anything, really. So it was with Arjuna. He was so perplexed, and there was no power that could get him out of it. Then he turned to Krishna. We have been joking as friends for so many years, but now I need you as the Lord and my guru. Krishna gave, began his teachings. Asochanan vasochastvam. He begins by telling Arjuna, you, are, you think you are very intelligent, but actually you are a fool. You are speaking all learned words, but you do not really know anything. That was the beginning of the Gita. Why are you lamenting in this way? And then Krishna teaches the nature of the soul. The tvevaham jatunasvam na tvam ne me janadapa the chaivana bhavishyama saravivayamataparam Never was there a time when you did not exist, nor me, nor all these kings, nor should any of us cease to be. We are all individual, unique spirit souls who are not najayate mriyate vakadachit, who are not subject to birth or death, who are transmigrating through childhood, youth, old age, and through death entering into another form again and again and again. And Krishna explains the glories of the soul as being part of him, explains the nature of material existence, how the soul becomes implicated within this material existence through our desires and through our attachments and words and actions according to those desires and attachments. We become implicated in the laws of karma. Krishna explains these three modes of nature quite thoroughly in the Gita. How we're being influenced by goodness, passion, ignorance, like ropes being dragged from one desire, from one action, from one word to the next, from one birth to the next. The power of time. And he reveals himself, who he is, how to see him everywhere. I'm the light of the sun and the moon. I'm the ability in man, the taste in water. I'm the river Ganga, etc. 
explains who he is, transcendental, why he comes to this world. His transcendental nature. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutanama dharmasya tadatmanam surajamya. Although Krishna is transcendental, beyond material existence, he enters into material existence out of his love, out of his mercy for all living beings to give us a chance to taste the sweetness we're always looking for, the sweetness of love for him. It's only by bhakti, it's only by love that I can be understood as I am. Krishna explains the yoga system, the astanga yoga system in the sixth chapter. How to achieve samadhi or liberation. And concludes, yogi namam pisaravisha madgate nantaratmana, sharavan bhajate yomam sameyukta tamasata. Of all yogis, one who serves me with love and faith is most intimately united with me in yoga and is highest of all. Krishna reveals the virat rupa, the universal form to Arjuna to show that this beautiful form of Krishna who appears in Vrindavan as a cowherd boy is not just an ordinary little boy. He's the source of the Virat Rupa, the universal form, the manifestation of the entire creation, the beginning and the end of all beings. And after this incredible dis explanation of the science of self-realization, Krishna tells Arjuna, Sarva dharman purityasya, mame kam sharanam praja, aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha isas vimasucha. You should abandon all varieties of dharma and just surrender to me. I shall protect you from all dangers deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And Krishna tells how to surrender to him. Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yashim dam namaskuru mami vaishasi shatyam te prati jani priyoshime. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer your homage unto me. In this way you will come to me without fail. It is my promise, because you are my dear friend. <clears throat> so everything is there in the Gita. But in this world, it is very rare, especially in this age of Kali, that anyone can actually understand things just by listening. To really comprehend wisdom, knowledge, or to transform knowledge into wisdom, real, realization. We need personal examples. Person who live these principles. So after Krishna spoke the highest truth in Gita, in the same, in the next yuga, the Lord appears personally in the role of a devotee to teach by his example. He comes as the Yuga Avatar, one who teaches the most powerful, most profoundly effective way of awakening Prema Bhakti, love of God, in this age. Kalerado sanide rajan asti heka mahan guna kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sangha parambraja. This age of Kali is an ocean of faults. But there is one benediction. Simply chanting the names of Krishna, one can attain the perfection of liberation. 
This is not just a sectarian idea. This is according to the Vedic scriptures. This is not just a detail. This is a very, very prominent instruction of the Vedas. If we want some peace of mind, if we want to improve our material condition, if we want mystical yogic powers, if we want elevation to higher planets, if we want liberation from suffering, there are several methods by which one can attain it. But if we want Krishna Prema, Prema Bhakti, if we want the awakening of the ecstatic love of God from our hearts, which Lord Chaitanya taught is the Purushartha Siromani, the crest jewel of all goals in life, then the method is the chanting of God's holy names. Yes, we can get many other spiritual benefits from many other processes. They are good. But the awakening of Prem, Harinama, 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 Eva, Kevalam, Kalo, Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. The chanting of God's names is the empowered process in this age of Kali for doing that. In previous ages, one could do it by meditation, by deity worship, by performing of sacrifices, yajyas. But Kali Yuga, the holy name, is especially empowered for that purpose. But it's not that just anybody who just says the name is going to achieve that goal. We must understand the science, the process, how to chant the name of the Lord. What should our spirit be? What should be our culture? To teach by his example, Krishna descends in the role of a devotee. And not only that, he sends his most intimate, loving associates in the role of devotees, just to show us. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not only taught us by his example, but he taught us by the examples of so many of his loving servants. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna and Radha in one form. Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupa. Krishna came to taste the sweetness of Radha's love and to distribute that sweetness of love, Radha's love, to the world. And along with him, he brought Brishabhanu. Brishabhanu is, came in the form of Pundarik Vidyaniti, Srimati Radharani's eternal f father in Goloka descended into this world. And he taught how one could be a very, very prosperous, wealthy landowner and not give anything away and not renounce one's wealth, but to live in complete devotion, in ecstasy, in such a way that even Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he would dress luxuriously, he had nice homes, he had servants, and yet Gadadhar Pandit, the most austere, renounced brahmachari in all the world, accepted him as guru. Received the mantra from him. Quite unbelievable. Through Pundarik Vidyanidhi, the Lord taught how one could be a devotee even in that state. And some of the most intimate gopi manjaris of Vrindavan came as Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, who taught us how to renounce everything and live the most austere ways in the renounced order, living under trees, begging for food, even though they were born in multi-billionaire families. 
or attain that position. And Nityananda came, Balaram, Nanda and Yashoda came as Jagannath Mishra and Sachi. Lord Brahma came as Haridas Thakur. Lalita and Vishaka came as Ramananda Rai and Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar, who was Lalita Saki, he was most austere brahmachari who became a sannyasi. And Ramananda Rai, Vishaka, what role did he take? He, he was a governor. <laughs> he was riding around in palaquins. I mean, nobody does that today. When you go to take your bath, yes. I go to take my bath, I walk to the Ganga and take a bath. Maybe a few people come with me. Even the king of, even the prime minister of India goes to take bath in the Ganga, you know, he just walks over there and takes his bath. But when Ramananda Rai would go to take his bath, and he took three baths a day, he would be carried in a magnificent palaquin with Brahmins chanting mantras all around him and people blowing conch shells. This is Vishaka of the spiritual world. Dressed very, dressed in so many beautiful ornaments. So Lalita Vishaka, one is Swarup Dhammadar Goswami sleeping on the floor, living as a sannyasi, as one is Ramananda Roy, who is ruling over the, an entire province of the kingdom as a governor. And ultimately came to Puri just to be with Lord Chaitanya. Can you imagine? Just, he understood what was really valuable. And they all were in the roles of devotees. Each and every one of them, servant of the servant of the servant. To teach us what is really of the greatest value. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world especially to teach through his example, Jivera Swarupoy Krishna Ranitya Das, that we are eternally Krishna servants. And in the Mahaprakash Lila, which we may discuss tomorrow in more detail, the Lord was revealing himself as Krishna to all the devotees, one at a time according to what a devotee's particular bhava or devotion was, the Lord was reciprocating. To Marari Gupta, who was Hanuman in his previous life, Lord Chaitanya revealed himself as Ram. Not only Ram, but right in Srivas's little house, just a simple Brahminical house, the Lord revealed Ram, and next to him was Sita Lakshman. And then Murari Gupta realized, all of a sudden he had a tail. <laughs> he, forgot, he forgot that he was Hanuman until that moment. To Kolavecha Sridhar, that simple little banana leaf seller, the Lord revealed his form of Krishna, the cowherd boy, in such a beautiful, and revealed to Sridhar, you are my cowherd boy friend. He revealed his form of Radha Krishna to Ramananda Rai, revealing so many opulences in so many ways. And he was offering benedictions to his devotees. He offered all of them any amount of wealth, any amount of power, any amount of mystic siddhis, liberation, elevation to the spiritual world. But we never found that anyone ever asked anything of him except to serve. That was the mood of Prahlad. 
Prahlad endured so many difficulties. And usually you want to be recognized when you go through difficulties. And Narasimha Dev was standing face to face with Prahlad. That same Narasimha Dev that was the most ferocious destroyer of Hiranyakashipu was so sweet and so gentle and so soft and kind to Prahlad. When Lord Chaitanya was in South India at Singhachalam, where the Jiyada Narasimha has been worshipped by the Sri Sampradaya for a thousand years. He offered this prayer while he was dancing before the Lord. That you are just like a lioness, a mother lion. If any, you are, you are most loving and kind and sweet and nourishing to your little cub who has taken shelter of you. But if anyone tries to hurt your cub, you are the most ferocious form of death personified. So Narasimha Dev said to Prahlad, I will give you anything, everything, any benediction, ask me. Prahlad said, I, if I ask you for anything, then I'm not your devotee. I'm just like a business person doing trade with you. I give you something, I expect something in return. I don't want anything. If you want to give me anything, then I just never want to forget you. And as long as there's anybody suffering in this world forgetting you, let me be here. Let me even suffer in this world if I can help other people to love you. And my father, he was so wicked. So many atrocities that he created. Where he, his soul is destined. If you want to give me something, that person who tried to kill me, that person who tortured me, that person who hated me, give him liberation. That's all he asked. Why did he ask for liberation for Hiranyakashipu? And he didn't ask anything for himself. What kind of person is this? Because he knows what pleases Krishna. When you love Krishna, you're compassionate to people of this world. He understood that, that compassion is what pleases Krishna. And he didn't want anything in return for his compassion except that Krishna be pleased with him. So this is how all the devotees were living. Marari Gupta, he was offered any benediction. He said, let me just be let me just be with those devotees who never forget you so that I will never forget you and chant your holy names. Kaldo Sridhar, I just want to be the servant of the servant of your servants and always remember your little form of Nimai stealing my bananas. And Adwaita Charya, what benediction did he ask? Spread this love to the whole world. Let the Sankirtan movement spread everywhere. Nothing for themselves. Everything for Krishna. And our beloved Srila Prabhupada, what was his prayers to Krishna and the Jaladuta? Heart attack, seasickness, old age, poverty. What would you pray for? Even a saint, even a saint would pray for some, some relief. But a pure devotee is beyond even a saint. He just asked Krishna, just let me be an instrument, a puppet, to speak your message 
to deliver these people in all over the world from suffering. And Lord Chaitanya himself manifested this personally and through his devotees. Therefore, Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yo Veti Tatvata Tyaktva Deham Punar Janma Naiti Mameti Sorja. One who understands the transcendental nature and act of the birth and activities of the Lord never takes birth in this material world again, but attains my abode. This is what Krishna tells. And as the Yugavatar, and beyond the Yugavatar, Lord Chaitanya, the Yuga Avatar came, he came at the same time as the Yuga Avatar was scheduled. But he is Krishna from Vrindavan who has descended with the love of Radha to distribute it to the world. He came to give prema to Harinam. But to his devotees, he wanted to attract his hearts and in the process attract the whole world's hearts through his loving pastimes. We were discussing Lord Chaitanya's childhood pastimes. When he was just a little boy, he would love to go to the Ganga to take his bath. And not only take his bath, but play. He and his friends, they were so extremely enthusiastic to play. And whatever the Lord does is perfect. When he puts somebody in anxiety during his Leela as Lord Chaitanya, he would that anxiety would be their highest ecstasy. Because he's Krishna. Just like we read in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami tells us how Krishna would go to the gopis' houses to steal butter and yogurt. And he did it in such a mischievous way that the gopis almost every day would come to complain to Yashodamai what Krishna is doing. But that was their greatest happiness in life, to complain about Krishna. There was no envy, there was no enmity, it wasn't even anger, it was just, it was kirtan, a very special kirtan. <laughs> just like we come together to praise Krishna's beautiful glories, well that's what they would do. They would come together like a kirtan and they would praise Krishna's mischievous activities. To Yashodamai. He breaks our pots, he steals our butter, he puts water in the ears of our babies and makes them cry. Sometimes he pinches them, sometimes he brings whole herds of monkeys into our house and feeds them our butter. He, and you showed him, I would say, well, I will somehow, I will keep him home. And they said, no, 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 please don't do that. Actually, we like, we like when he comes and does this. We make our butter only, we make, the gopis would bake their butter and they would put all the ecstatic, oceanic love of their hearts into every um, motion of churning that butter, thinking that if I really put all my love into it, then Krishna will come to steal it. And if Krishna didn't come to steal their butter, they would be suffering in separation. <laughs> and when he did come, then they would chastise him, and they would chase him, and they would threaten to punish him. <laughs> and they would tell his mother on him, this is Vrindavan, so beautiful. Krishna's own auntie, caught him, said, I'm going to bring you to Yashoda. You're always saying you don't steal butter, and, 
and I'm always telling her, you do steal butter, and she doesn't believe me, but now I'm going to, you have butter all over your face and butter all over your hands and butter everywhere, I'm going to take you. And Krishna said, I warn you. <laughs> Little baby, little child Krishna <laughs> said, I warn you. He had a very high little voice. He said, I warn you. Don't, don't, don't take me to my mother. She said, I must take you to your mother. She must understand that what we're saying about you is true. So she dragged Krishna Mother gives shoulder, she said, here he is, you see butter all over his face. Now do you believe me? He has been stealing so much butter from our house. I caught him today, red-handed. <laughs> you showed him, I looked at her like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and Krishna's auntie was looking at your shoulder, I, well, I, I, what I'm talking about is what I'm talking about. Gopal stole butter, here he is, I caught him. And your shoulder looked like, what, what, is, what do you mean? <laughs> and his auntie looked down and holding her hand was her own son. <laughs> It wasn't Krishna, it was her own son with butter all over his face. <laughs> Krishna's auntie was totally confused. She was really be seriously bewildered. Like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> she was speechless. She could not say a word to Yashoda Mai. She just took her son and went home, started walking home. <laughs> Thinking, how did that happen? This is impossible. How did this happen? She was blank, totally blank. And then her little son pulled her hand. And she looked down, and it was Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna looked at her with a very firm, smile <laughs> and said, I, I warned you. <laughs> and he continued, if you do it again, next time I will take the form of your husband. <laughs> way the devotees they loved Krishna's mischief so Lord Chaitanya he performed the same leelas with the residents of Navadweep when he was a little boy but instead of stealing butter which he would sometimes do that too he would lovingly harass everybody in the Ganga because bathing in the Ganga, performing puja in the Ganga was, was very much the backbone, the foundation of people's lives in Navadweep in those days. So one day, the men of Navadweep, they came together, very loving, scholarly relatives and friends of Jagannath Mishra, and they said, we have just come from the Ganga. It's like this every day. It's becoming intolerable. It's becoming impossible to deal with any, with your son. And Jagannath Misha said, what, what, what do you mean? What happened? What happened? He said, your son, every day he comes and he creates with his friends, he creates havoc. <laughs> he splashes water in our face while we're doing our puja. When I'm sitting in meditation, he'll splash me with water and then he'll start 
kicking water all over me nonstop until he ruins my meditation. Another Brahmin said, "Well, I was sitting in meditation, and all of a sudden I was actually in the water of the Ganga doing my Gayatri mantra, and all of a sudden." Little Nimai's head just pops right out of the water from underground, right in front of me. His mouth, his cheeks are filled with Ganga water, and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> from his mouth, he sprays it right into my face, and I, I can't even chant my mantra. And other times, I do my holy. My holy bath, and I'm on. I just come out, about to do my puja, and Nimai takes hands full of sand and throws it all over my body, so I have to go back in and bathe again. Another time, one person said I was meditating, and Nimai sits right in front of me and said, "Whom you meditate on is now right in front of you." <laughs> One said, "I was worshiping Shiva in the form of a Shiva linga, and Nimai ran by and stole my Shiva lingam." He said, "Well, that's not as bad as what happened to me." He said, "I came out of the Ganga, I put my clothes in the ghat, and I come out with only my kopan, and he stole all my clothes. <laughs> what to do?" I was worshiping Vishnu," another Brahmin said, and Nimai came and took the Shalagram Shila and sat on the throne of Vishnu and put the Shalagram Shila in his lap and said, "Worship me." <laughs> another Brahmin said, "I was chanting Gayatri at noon time while in the Ganga, and all of a sudden." From underwater, I feel these hands grab my feet and pull me. He pulled me right underwater. It was Nimai. Another said, "Well, I was reading Bhagavad Gita, and he came and stole my Bhagavad Gita." Another said, "As we were doing our puja on the bank of Ganga, we had our little baby, and Nimai came." And took Ganga water and started dropping it in the ears of our little babies, and they were crying and crying and crying. And Nimai simply laughed. <laughs> Another said, "I was doing some puja in Ganga, and all of a sudden Nimai jumped on my shoulders and screamed, 'I am Shiva!'" And then jump, used me like a diving board, and jumped, <laughs> jumped off of my shoulders into the Ganga and swam away before I could catch him. Another said, "Jagannath Mishra, please understand. You may think these things are bad, but you know what he did today, and you know what he does every day. The women." On one side of the Ganga, at a ghat, and we're at another ghat. We leave all our clothes. They leave all their clothes. When we and our wives come out of the Ganga, he exchanges. <laughs> the only thing we have to put on are our skirts <laughs> and these cholis and saris. And our wives come out, and there's just dodies <laughs> and longies. He remains in the Ganga for six hours minimum every day. He doesn't come out of the water. How will your son maintain his health? Jagannath Mishra. He was becoming very angry, and then the young girls came to complain to Sachi Mata. They said, "Sachi Devi, you know this Nimai of yours—he harasses us so much. 
He steals our clothes. We're, we're little girls. We come out of the Ganga. We have nothing to put on. Sometimes he insults us. Sometimes he splashes us. Sometimes he picks quarrels that we can never win. Other times, we, our parents taught us that we should worship Lord Shiva for a good husband when we grow up. And we bring offerings of sweets and fused rice and other things, and he will just come up and take our offerings and throw them in the Ganga. Other times he throws sand in our face. One said he spit water in my face. And another said, after I came out of the Ganga, he took sticky okada seeds and threw them in my hair. Another girl said, he's just a little boy. And he says, I will marry you. <laughs> Another, several of the girls started explaining what happened to them. They were worshiping Shiva for a husband. And Nimai would come and move Shiva aside and <laughs> sit on the throne. <laughs> and said, and he would start eating all the offerings. You know, he had laddus and kheers and all kinds of, you know, he was just eating and eating and eating. And he'd take the garlands for the Lord and put them around his own neck. And he would take the sandalwood and he would put it on himself. And the girls would say, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? How can you do this? This is meant for the Lord. And Nimai would say, if you worship me, I will bless you to have a beautiful, learned husband who will take care of you and you will have each seven very healthy, strong, intelligent sons <laughs> and a very, very loving, kind, protective, handsome husband. Just worship me. So some of the girls were really thinking, this is good luck. <laughs> they didn't know he was God, but it really sounded nice. And, other <laughs> and others, they thought, what is this boy doing? This little boy, he's taking all of our offerings. I'm not going to give it to him. And they'd run away. And Nehemiah would yell at them. He'd say, come back and worship me, otherwise I will curse you to have an old, ugly husband and four co-wives. <laughs> so what could they do? They ran back. And they're telling Sachi Devi, this is what he does every day. And if we complain to our parents about what he does, then they're all going to be complaining to you like anything. They're going to come to quarrel with you. And Sachi Devi, she would just smile and say, I'm sorry, you know, I will, I will somehow or other, I will keep him from going to the, from, to the Ganga. They say, no, 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 actually, don't take him, don't keep him from the Ganga. He said, that's why we go to the Ganga. <laughs> Externally, we're going to worship gods and husbands and do all these other things, but actually, we just go there to meet Nimai. This was their mood. And Vrindavan Das Thakur explains that if the Vedas took 10 million forms and each form had thousands and thousands and thousands of mouths to speak, they could not fathom the good fortune of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi, who had the supreme absolute truth Gopal Krishna in the form of Nimai as their own loving little son. But Krishna Kaviraj Goswami explains in Chaitanya Charitamrita 
One day when Nimai was doing all these things, very, very mischievous, on the bank of Ganga, he saw a little girl. He was just a little boy at the time. He saw a little girl. She was the daughter of a great Brahmin named Balabhacharya, and her name was Lakshmi Priya. She's the eternal consort of the Lord. She's the incarnation of Rukmini. She's the incarnation of Sita. She's an expansion of Srimati Radharani. And when little Nimai saw little Lakshmi, even though they were very restless little children, he was at least, their love immediately awoke for each other. Such deep love. And Lakshmi voluntarily offered all the garlands and all the sandalwood and all the sweets that she brought to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. She, as a little girl, she offered them all to Nimai. That was their first meeting on the bank of Ganga. And although they were very, very beautiful little tiny children, that love was awakened, established. Nimai was so very mischievous and he had no fear of his mother and father. On this particular day, when all the Brahmins were complaining to Jagannath Mishra and all the girls were complaining to Sachi Devi, Jagannath Mishra picked up a stick. And he said, I will teach him a good lesson today. He cannot do these things to you. And they said, no, 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 don't hurt him or anything, but you know, he's, he's there right now. He's there at the Ganga right now. So Jagannath Mishra, in his parental affection, you see, anger in bhakti is there, but it's not anger due to frustrated ego or frustrated desires. Anger is a tool to, to serve. Nimai wouldn't take good instructions, and he was causing havoc everywhere, even though it was very innocent and sweet. Still, his father, I will have to use anger to scare him, to teach him. So he went storming over to the Ganga. And meanwhile, the little girls who had just complained against him, they went running from another direction back to the Ganga. And, and Nimai was with all his friends, joking and laughing and swimming and splashing and doing all of his pastimes. And the little girl said, Nimai, Nimai, your father's coming with a stick. Everyone just complained to him. He's coming to punish you. And Nimai started laughing. Ah, and he said to <laughs> And he said to his friends, if my father comes, tell him I haven't, I haven't come to the Ganga today. You're, you're all still waiting for me. So then he jumped out and he went another direction. Meanwhile, as Jagannath Mishra was on his way to the Ganga, Nimai was gone. And Jagannath Mishra arrived. And he said, where is Nimai? Where is Nimai? And the little boy said, we're still waiting for him. He hasn't come yet. He said, what? You know, I was just told by all these people that he was here. He's been here for so many hours. He said, no, no, he hasn't come yet. And the Brahmins went up to him and said, they, they embraced Jagannath Mishra. And they say, actually, he just ran away. <laughs> But please no, we love whatever he does. Be happy. You are the most you are the most fortunate man in all of Brahma's creation to have Nimai as a father. He's the source of all happiness and love for everyone. 
and Jagannath Mishra, he embraced them and said, please forgive my son for his naughtiness and please pray for him and bless him. Meanwhile, Nimai arrived home and Sachimata, who just heard all these complaints that Nimai was in the Ganga for so many hours doing all of these leelas, she was astonished because he was dressed in the same clothes as he was in when he left for school that morning. You see, he would go to school and after school he would be in the Ganga. And there was still ink spots all over his hands and his body. And, his, and there was a thin layer of dust on his body. And his hair was absolutely purely dry. How everybody's complaining against my Nimai. He hasn't been to the Ganga today. And just when she was... She, she, Jagannath Mishra arrived. And he saw he was very angry. Not only did Nimai do all this to the Brahmins and the little girls, but he ran away and escaped. And he looked at Nimai, and Nimai just smiled, and Nimai jumped on his lap. <laughs> Jagannath Misha's heart totally melted. <laughs> Nimai started embracing him, and he started embracing Nimai, and he was thinking, how is your body so dry, and how is your hair so dry, and how do you still have ink marks if you've been in the Ganga all day? And, he, and Jagannath Misha said, Nimai, don't you, even, don't you even fear Vishnu? You sit on Vishnu's throne and eat Vishnu's offerings and put Vishnu's garland on yourself and you take Shiva's offerings and you enjoy those? Aren't you even afraid of Vishnu and Shiva? And you cause so much, and aren't you afraid of causing disturbance to great Brahmins? And little Nimai looked at him and smiled, an angry kind of smile. <laughs> said, my dear father, I haven't even been to the Ganga today. If they're charging me with all of these misdeeds when I haven't even been there, then now I'm going to go there and I'm going to show them what I could do. <laughs> and then Nimai jumped off his father's lap and ran back to the Ganga. <laughs> Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra looked at each other like, oh, who is our son? Who is this Nima? <laughs> How is this possible? But their hearts were so over flooded with the ecstasy of love, all they could do was cry. And meanwhile, Nimai ran and he goes back and all his friends were still waiting for him in the Ganga and they all cheered that Nimai came back. And one of them said, Nimai, Nimai, you escaped a good beating today. <laughs> And then Nimai told him everything that happened. He explained everything, what his father, what his mother, and they were all laughing and laughing and laughing. And then he jumped back in the Ganga and continued doing all the things that we were talking about. <laughs> so, it described by Vrindavan Das Thakur that Nimai didn't have fear of his mother and father. But whenever he came before his elder brother, Vishwarup, he was very humbled. He had amazing reverence toward his older brother, who was an expansion of Nityananda, Balaram. And Vishwarup is a beautiful description of how he lived. He never had any type of inclinations toward material enjoyment. He was such a saintly boy. All he was concerned about was being with devotees and hearing and chanting about Krishna. He was totally self-controlled. He respected everyone. 
He was the very embodiment of culture and respectability and sensitivity and total detachment from anything but the loving service of the Lord, even when he was a boy. When he would see all the materialistic ways that were going on in Navadvik in those days, it broke his heart. So from early morning, he would, he would wake up in the morning, he would bathe in the Ganga, and then he would go, he would perform his puja in the temple to Jagannath Mishra's deity. And then he would go to Adwaitacharya's house in Navadweep. And there he'd be with the devotees like Srivas and Haridas, Sri Ram, Sri Pati, Sri Nidhi, and all of with Mukunda Dat, Vasudev Dat. And they would all do kirtan. And they would do puja, archanam, to Adwaita's deities. And they would talk about Krishna, study Krishna. And even though Vishwarupa was just a boy, and these others were very, very many elderly, scholarly men, avatars, whenever Vishwarupa would speak about Krishna, whenever he would speak from the scriptures, it was so sweet, it was so concise, and so full of love that he would mesmerize the entire audience of Vaishnavas. It was the ultimate relish of their life to hear Vishwarup speak about Krishna. And he would spend the entire day with them. And sometimes when Nimai was just a little boy, the same age as when he was causing all the leelas in the Ganga, Sachi Mata would tell Nimai that I have prepared prasad. It's been offered to the Lord. Please bring Vishwarup home to eat prasad. So little Nimai would run from the yoga peat to Advaita Bhavan. And in the presence of all the devotees, little Nimai would come, just sometimes only clothed in the four directions. And he'd pull his brother's dhoti and said, my brother, Vishwarup, mother is calling you for prasad. And he'd smile. And all the devotees were just in the midst of a very, very, very soul-enchanting harikata talking about Krishna. But when they saw this little boy, Nimai, they didn't know that he was that Krishna that they were talking about. But one thing they did know is as soon as they saw him, they didn't even have the power to blink their eyes. Could you imagine being enchanted to that extent? They just gazed upon him. He totally captured their hearts. They were so enthralled that not a single one of them, Adoita, Haridas, they couldn't even talk about Krishna. They were spellbound. They all just stood there for several moments with unblinking eyes gazing at this little boy who was just smiling and playing. And they couldn't understand what's happened. They loved this child with all their hearts, all their souls. But by the Lord's yoga maya potency, they couldn't understand who he was. And little Nimai would smile at them and say, come brother, come, mother's waiting, mother's waiting. And they'd both run off together back to Sachi Devi's house. And meanwhile, the Vaishnavas, they just watched as Nimai and Vishru ran off, speechless. 
that when they were out of sight, they looked at each other. Like, what was that? Who is that? Who is that child? How does he have this power over our hearts? It was inconceivable to them. Vishwarup. He was very grave, very sober. But he would watch the pastimes of his little brother, Nimai, and was struck with wonder. He would see how all the Vaishnavas would be attracted to him. And even he, by the Yogamaya potency, didn't know that he was God himself, that he was Krishna Gopal. He was thinking, my brother is so special. <laughs> Vishwarup, that was the joy of his life, to watch the little the pastimes of his little brother and to be with the devotees, singing in, about Krishna. So this way, in those days, the people of Navadweep, the ordinary people, especially the scholarly people, who were like the teachers, they were so vain so proud of their learning, of their accomplishments, of whatever they had acquired. And for them, the Vaishnavas, they actually hated the Vaishnavas. Because the Vaishnavas were just the opposite. They were humble. To the Vaishnavas, they just wanted to serve. To these others, the goal of life is to enjoy. The Vaishnavas would respect everybody. And these people, they didn't respect anybody. They only respected what was good for them. And they were always wanting more and more. And the devotees, they didn't really care if they had anything or everything. So they would be constantly criticizing blaspheming the devotees. They would see a devotee, and they, this chanting of God's names, they thought this is just sentimental stuff. We are scholars of Sanskrit grammar. They would see a devotee, they would see Vishwarup. Vishwarup is Balaram. Vishwarup is a source of Mahavishnu as is Advaita Acharya. Haridas Thakur is Lord Brahma. If they want to punish you, they could do some very, very extraordinary things. <laughs> but they're devotees. They're taking humble positions. And unbelievable. Vishwarup would see Haridas Thakur being blasphemed, he would see Sridhar being blasphemed, he would see Adwaita being blasphemed, he'd see Srivas Thakur and his brothers constantly. He would hear them saying, this Srivas, this loud chanting of the holy names, he's going to destroy Navadweep. What is this nonsense? It's now Chaturmasya, Vishnu sleeping. And they're chanting his names. <laughs> If they wake him up, he's going to get so angry, he's going to destroy the whole of Navaweep, and we're all going to be destroyed because of Srivas. What to speak of the Mughal king who has outlawed this public demonstration of Hindu rights? Because of Srivas as his brothers, we're all going to be devastated. So before that, we should beat him, we should tie him up, we should tear down his house, we should throw it all in the Ganga. This is what they would talk. They would see a devotee walking and, they, and these, these people of Navadweep, they would, the proud scholars, they would yell out, ah, oh, Vaishnav, waste of time. You cry for Krishna, but why doesn't your cry break your poverty? What is the use? Real success, the real blessings of God is when you ride in a magnificent palaquin, or you have a pedigree horse to ride upon. 
and you have at least 10 servants running ahead of you and running behind you doing whatever you say. Whether one is a sannyasi or a yogi or a chaste and faithful wife, still you have to die just like the rest of us. So why are you wasting your time with these things? The devotees would weep and cry in compassion for these people. It was for these people that Advaita Charya was crying, Krishna, please come and deliver them. And Vishwarup, the small boy, was just not, he was at this point just reaching his adolescence. He was a young boy when he saw this. It was intolerable for him. He just stayed with the devotees. His heart would break seeing the materialistic ways of the people of society. And one day he heard his father, Jagannath Mishra, talking to his mother about arranging for Vishwarup's marriage. That same night, in the middle of the night, without saying a word to anyone, Vishwarup, who could not tolerate seeing the burning fire of materialistic ways scorching the people of Navadweep like this. He couldn't see their faces, not out of hate, but out of compassion. That night, he left home forever. Without saying a word to anyone, he approached a sannyasi and took sannyas. Was given the name Shankar Aranya and traveled, traveled throughout India for the rest of his life. When Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra woke up the next morning and found Vishwarup was gone, they were beside themselves with grief. They loved him so very, very dearly. And not only that, after not knowing where he had gone, what happened to him, finally they get the news that this boy has become a sannyasi and he will never come home. They were plunged in an ocean of grief. Sachi Devi could not stop crying. Jagannath Mishra would beside himself in sorrow. And little Nimai losing his older brother. It was devastating to his heart. Little Nimai was crying. Somehow or other, all the relatives and the friends of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi came up to the house to try to pacify them. And they were saying to Jagannath Mishra, even though they were feeling the same separation as he was, they were trying to help him. They said, actually, you are so fortunate. Your son has become a sannyasi. That means, according to scripture, they were quoting, 60 million of your forefathers and foremothers will all be liberated when a son in the family becomes a sannyasi. So you should be proud. We are all proud. We should be happy. He has liberated your whole family for so many generations. He's found Krishna. Jagannath Mishra, that didn't satisfy him. <laughs> They would hold his hands and try to pacify him. And sometimes Jagannath Misha would start philosophically understanding, and other times he would think of Vishwarup's beautiful face, and all those philosophical understandings would disappear. And he was thinking like this, that actually nothing is mine. 
This body is not mine. This home is not mine. Nothing's mine. Actually, Krishna gave me this body. And Krishna gave me Vishwarup to, to be my son. And Krishna has taken Vishwarup away. So whatever Krishna desires is perfect. And with this type of philosophical reasoning, he became pacified. But what pacified him the most was Nimai. Everyone would say to Jagannath Risha, you may have lost one son, but look at the son you have. He's the crest jewel of all sons. He's so beautiful. He's so intelligent. He's so everything. And Nimai would say to his mother and father, he said, Vishwaroop may have left, but I will stay with you. I will become, I will stay with you and serve you and I will become a householder and I will take care of you. You always have me. One day, there's a ceremony that where this happened little before. The ceremony where a child begins his education. It's one of the samskaras. Where Jagannath Risha got a slate and some chalk and taught Nimai the letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. And little Nimai learned everything so fast. And everything he learned, he would always be writing down the names of Krishna, Mukunda, Murari, Hari. So brilliant. And after Vishwarup left, Nimai became totally engrossed in studies. He had two teachers, Vishnu and <coughs> Sudarshan. And he Anything he learned, anything he was taught, he immediately learned and assimilated. He was totally immersed in his books and his studies. And one day, Jagannath Mishra said to Sachi Devi, I'm very worried about our son, Nimai. She said, why? He's doing so nicely. He said, he studies so much. And he's studying the Vedas. If he studies the Vedas, then he's going to learn that this material world is illusory and everything is temporary and only the absolute is permanent. And he's going to renounce the world just like Vishwarup did. Vishwarup was engrossed in studying the Vedas with the Vaishnavas and he took sannyas. If we allow our little son Nimai to learn about the Vedas, he's going to become a sannyasi. And Sachi Mata said, what are you talking about? He's, he's our, he promised to stay home. He's our playful child. He, he loves to study. He said, from this day on, I'm going to forbid him from any study. And Sachi Devi said, how, are we, how do you expect him to earn a living? And how do you expect him to... Haribo, Haribo. Wonderful to see you. How do you expect him to get a good wife. Who's going to marry their daughter to an illiterate person? And Jagannath Misha, he said, oh, you are, although you are the daughter of a great learned Brahmin, you are speaking like a foolish child, my wife. He said, it's only by Krishna's grace that one gets wealth. It's only by Krishna's grace that one gets a good wife. It's not by studying. Look at me, I'm a learned scholar, and we don't even have any rice in our house. And look over there. There are people who cannot even write a single letter of the alphabet, but they have so much wealth that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of learned Pundits just sitting in their courtyard waiting to get a donation from them. <laughs> it is not by learning that one gets good wife and good... It is only by Krishna's grace. And then he called Nimai and said, Nimai, from this day, I forbid you to study any books. 
Nimai did not like this. Jagannath Misha said, you could do anything you want, but not study. So that was a good... <laughs> it was a good opportunity. So Nimai started doing anything he wanted. He couldn't study. He would play with his friends doing so much mischief, not only all day, but sometimes all night. He was just a boy. And Jagannath Misha didn't try to stop him because he was afraid if he tried to stop him, he would start studying again. <laughs> and it describes some of the things Nimai would do. Of course, he did un unlimited mischief. But some that we read about in the scripture is he would get his friends. And three friends, Nimai and two others, they would put a blanket over their body, a big blanket. So they looked like a bull, like a huge bull, right? And what they would do is during the day, they would go around and look to see nice banana plantation. And then at night, they would put the bull costume on and the three of them would charge into the banana plantation and start knocking over all the banana trees. And the owner of the house, he would come out, he would hear <coughs> all these banana trees getting knocked down. He would come out and see this big white bull and he would start screaming, hi, 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 get out, of, out, of, out from here, out from here. And the boys, the bull would run away and then they'd take off their costume and, and laugh and laugh and laugh and then put on the costume and go to the next banana plantation. <laughs> Sometimes. Because in those days there were no toilets in the house. You would go outside if you wanted to respond to nature's call. So Nimai and his friends would go to their houses and tie the, or bolt the doors and windows closed from the outside. And then when the people in the house had to go to the bathroom, You know, they'd pull the door. <laughs> and you know, you can't knock when you're inside. <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> they were locked in the house. And they're Brahmins, so they can't just start responding to nature on the floor <laughs> or in their cooking pots or anything. What are they what are they? What are they going to do? Nature's calling. And we all, we all have experience of the evolution of that, of that experience. First nature's calling, then she's crying, then she's screaming, then she's howling. They were, in, they were in total desperation. They're knocking on the doors. They're crying, open the door, open the door, open the door, open the door. And meanwhile, their bladders and their bowels are bursting. And Nimai and his friends are outside listening to all this, and they're laughing and laughing and jumping and clapping, and then they run away. doesn't, the scripture doesn't go beyond that one. <laughs> one day some of the ladies, they came to Sachimata, some of the boys too. They said, Sachimata, your son Nimai, he's sitting in a very, very dirty place on top of pots that have been used. Because in those days, like in Puri, you cook with clay pots. And when you cook up with either cow dung or fire, the clay pots become completely black with the soot 
from the fire and the smoke on the back. And then after you cook with that pot, you discard the pot. It's considered contaminated at that point. After it's been cooked and offered, then you always cook in a new pot. So there was a, there was a pile, like a small hill, of all of these old used black burnt clay pots. And Sachi Devi came out and saw little Nimai sitting on top of this pile of pots. And because of all the blackness, there was black spots all over his body. It is explained his body was like a golden lotus and the black spots were like black bees that were swarming around the lotus, the golden lotus of his beautiful form. So Sachi was in great dismay. She cried out, Nimai, Nimai, why are you doing this? You're in a dirty, contaminated place. You are the son of a Brahmin. Haven't we taught you? What will people say that you're sitting on the top of, of rejected pots? Come down and take your bath. And Nimai said, how am I supposed to know what is clean and what is dirty? what is right and what is wrong when I'm not allowed to study. <laughs> you cannot blame me for sitting in dirty places and not knowing the difference between right and wrong because I'm just an uneducated person. And Sachi Mata said, to, please come down, don't you know? You have to bathe now, you are contaminated. And Nimai said, but I'm uneducated. How do I know these things? And then he entered into the mood of Dattatreya and said, everything is one. <laughs> there is no difference between dirty and not dirty because when I touch anything, it becomes completely purified. Whenever, wherever I am present, the Ganga is there to purify everything. And besides my mother, these pots were used to cook for Vishnu. They were offered to Vishnu, therefore they're sacred. They cannot be contaminated. And besides all this philosophy, how will I ever learn what to do in this world if you don't allow me to study? And all the ladies who were gathered there to watch this, they became very, very moved by the Nimai's words. And they all started chastising Sachi Devi. She said, we're on his side. He's right. Why don't you let him study? How can you expect him to learn anything if you don't let him study? He said, you are so fortunate. Your child loves to study. Our children hate to study. We have to force them. We have to punish them. We have to do all sorts of bribes to get them to study. And your child spontaneously loves to study. Who is that enemy of yours who has convinced you to stop your child's studies? As far as we're concerned, he should stay on the top of the pots until you let him get an education. And Sachi Devi was so hurt. And ultimately, she had to personally climb to the top of the pots, and she got all dirty herself, and she picked up Nimai and brought him down to give him a bath. When Jagannath Misha came home that night, Sachi Devi told him everything. That everyone's criticizing us, and not only that, but Nimai's heart is really hurt. He wants to study. And then the relatives came to Jagannath Mishra and they started giving him his own philosophy from another perspective. They said, if Krishna wants Nimai to stay home, even if he becomes a learned scholar, he will stay home. <laughs> <laughs> and if Krishna wants him to get a good wife and be a good householder, even if he studies, Krishna could make that arrangement for him. So Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi looked at each other and called Nimai and said, you can begin your studies again. And Nimai had already chosen who he wanted to be his teacher. 
and he made an indication. Jagannath Mishra brought him to Navadweep, to the ashram of Ganga Das Pandit. In Krishna's Leela, he is Sandipani Muni, who was the guru and the teacher of Krishna Balaram. The beautiful meeting of the Lord and his guru. Jagannath Misha took little Nimai to the place of Ganga Das Pandit. And there he, he said, I entrust my beloved son into your care to teach him and to protect him. Ganga Das Pandit, Singh Nimai, his heart melted. At that moment, he not only accepted him as his favorite most student, but he accepted him as his own son. He said, with all of my powers, I will try my best to give him an education. And Ganga Das was so enthusiastic to please this, this young boy. And Nimai was so enthusiastic to please his teacher. The relationship was incredible. Ganga Das put his heart and soul into every lesson, and little Nimai put his life and soul into learning every lesson. He mastered every subject within a day after he learned it. And just to please his teacher, Ganga Das Pandit, Vishwambar, Nimai Vishwambar, he would, he would recite a teaching of Ganga Das. Then he would logically, scientifically, shastrically defeat it. And then he would use the same type of logic and philosophy to prove it to be the irrefutable truth. Who could do that? He was Ganga Das's unrivaled favorite student. And Ganga Das had thousands of students because he was such a popular teacher. There were thousands and thousands, literally millions of young men would come to Navadweep to learn from the different scholars there. I'll end today's discussion with one more story. One morning, Jagannath Mishra, he was crying again and again, offering his Dandavat Pradams, bowing down on the ground, crying, Krishna, Krishna, please keep me my at home. Please, Krishna, keep me my at home. You see, for Jagannath Mishra, I'll go back just a little. He had parental affection for Vishwambar, for Lord Goranga. We discussed the other day that he had, one day he chastised Lord Chaitanya. And that night, Jagannath Misha had a dream where a very effulgent, learned Brahmin appeared to him and said, you do not know who your son is. Why do you chastise him? And Jagannath Misha said, if I don't chastise him, how will he learn? Even if my son is a great yogi, even if he's a, he has all mystic cities, even if he's Lord Narayan, still, he's my son. <laughs> if I don't teach him the proper conduct, how will he ever learn? This Brahman told him, This Brahman 
offered obeisances, all glories to Jagannath Mishra. <laughs> After Vishwarup took sannyas, Lord Nimai told his mother and father that he had a dream. He said, Vishwarup appeared to me in a dream and took me by the hand and took me away from home and told me he was taking me away to take sannyas. And Nimai said to Vishwarup, he said, I'm just a small boy. I don't know anything about sannyas. And besides that, who's going to take care of our beloved mother and father? Now that you're gone, I will stay and take care of mother and father and I will become a householder just to serve them. And Vishwarup said, yes, this is what you must do. Please give my love to Sachi Devi, our mother. So when Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi heard these types of things, they were struck with wonder. Jagannath Mishra loved Nimai so dearly as a father. He was always worrying about his son. Just like Nanda and Yashoda, Shukadeva Goswami explains that Yashoda Mai, she was constantly enjoying the highest ecstatic, ecstatic spiritual bliss of total anxiety. That is rasa. That is rasa. That is bhav. The anxiety of worrying about Krishna getting bit by a monkey or scratched by a by a by a cat or being um, stepped on by a cow or touching or being pricked by a thorn. They were constantly worrying about Krishna. But that was a manifestation. It was, it was invoking, impelling deep, deep ecstasies of love for Krishna. These anxieties. And Jagannath Mishra was in that same mood. He was constantly worrying that Nimai may get hurt. He already had lost eight daughters. And his eldest son left. Nimai was all he had left in life. He was always worried that Nimai may get pricked, he may get bit, he may fall down, he may get hurt, he may get cursed, some, some evil spirit might come upon him. And Jagannath Mishra was constantly praying to Krishna, please give my son good health, please protect my son from danger, please protect my son from, every, from, from, from any ill omen, please, my heart, my soul, I'll give you everything, Krishna. Just make me my happy. Give him a long life. That was his constant meditation. So on this day, Sachi Devi sees Jagannath Mishra laying on the floor crying, offering obeisances, crying out to Krishna, please keep our son home. Sachi said, what happened? Jagannath said, I had a dream. Oh, what a dream it was. He said, I saw, I said, I saw our little Nimai. And he had shaven off all his beautiful hair. And he was in the robes of a sannyasi. How wonderful. How beautiful. How splendorous was that sannyasi form of our child. And then I saw he was surrounded by the Vaishnavas, 
There was the great, powerful Advaita Charya and all the others. And I saw Nimai sitting on a throne of Ananta Shesha. And all the great devotees were coming before him. And Nimai, as a sannyasi, was extending his feet and putting it on top of everyone's heads. And then I saw thousands and thousands of people all chanting the glories of our son. I saw Brahma with four mouths. And I saw Shiva with five mouths. I saw Ananta Shesha with a thousand mouths. And they were all chanting the glories of our son, Goranga. <laughs> Suddenly the whole, th everything changed. And in the dream, I saw little Nimai as a sannyasi with a shaved head, as a young man. And he was dancing in kirtan with tears pouring from his eyes as millions and millions of people in all directions were surrounding him, chanting the holy names of the Lord. This kirtan was tumultuous. The sound of the holy name was reaching beyond the universe. It was covering every direction. <clears throat> As Nehemiah was dancing and singing in such a trance of love. And soon there were millions, millions, and millions more people. He was inducing them all to chant, and every one of them was simply gazing on Nehemiah's beautiful form and ecstatic love. And in this kirtan, Nimai brought everyone to Jagannath Puri. Then practically collapsing in imminent separation, Sat Jagannath Misha said, I believe Nimai is going to leave us and become a sannyasi. Sachi Devi said, my dear husband, don't take it so seriously. It's only a dream. You can't take your dreams so serious like that. Our Nima, he loves to study his life, his soul, his everything. He can't keep away from his books. He, he will not leave us. These were the kinds of discussions every day. Lord Chaitanya's mothers and fathers would have. And a few days later, Jagannath Mishra, in his original spiritual body, he returned home to Goloka Vrindavan, back home, back to Godhead. Now Sachi Mata, she lost eight of her children. She lost Vishwarup. She lost her husband. All she had was little Nimai. And Lord Chaitanya, he was, he told his mother, I'm with you forever. And even though Sachi Mata was in so much despair, due to the loss of Jagannath Mishra, her beloved husband. Every time she looked at Nimai's smile, all miseries of the entire material existence could not, ex could not endure. Krishna Surya Samaya Oya Andhakar. When the brilliant light more effulgent than tens and millions of suns of Nimai's smile shone upon Sachi Devi's heart. She was so filled with ecstasy that she forgot everything of this world.
there could be no suffering. And when Nehemiah was studying, if she did not see him for a half hour, she would literally, if she didn't see Nehemiah for a half hour, that beautiful smiling ta- face, she would go totally blind and faint. That was the nature of her love. And one day Nehemiah again saw Lakshmi Priya. Now he was a young man, <coughs> about 16 or so. And again, their hearts connected. And one pundit named Vanamali, in his previous life, he was Vishwamitra, who arranged the marriage between Ram and Sita. And he was also the Brahmin that came from Vidarbha to arrange the marriage between Krishna and Rukmini. That same personality came to Navadweep as Vanamali. And Vanamali spoke to Sachi Devi and then went to Balabacharya and his wife and the beautiful marriage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Vishwampar, and Lakshmi Priya was arranged. And especially the Lord married Lakshmi Priya, who is his eternal consort, to give pleasure to Sachi Devi. There's a beautiful description of the marriage ceremony. And when Sachi Devi would see her daughter-in-law, Lakshmi, because she stayed with her all day while Nimai gradually became a great teacher. But all the devotees, they were praying if only this Nimai becomes a devotee, he can induce the entire world to chant the holy name. We will continue tomorrow. Thank you very much. Shall we have Kirtan? Have you had breakfast, Prasad, yet? Please raise your hand if you have had breakfast, Prasad, yet. Please raise your hand if you have not had breakfast, Prasad, yet. Please raise your hand if you don't know if you had breakfast. <laughs>